What's up, everybody? Today, we're going to be doing some awesome coding in Rust. We're going to build out this tool that looks something like this. We run our program against this hash. We run that against a password list, and we find where the password is within this list or if it even exists at all. So if you're at all interested in ethical hacking, coding, or Rust, this will be a great video for you to sharpen your skills and learn how to build out some hacking tools and learn some concepts of Rust as well. So let's go ahead and take a word from our sponsor and we're gonna jump right in. As always, if you like the video, please do consider subscribing to the channel. There are a ton of vulnerabilities out there from remote code execution to prototype pollution and even SQL injection, just to name a few. As an ethical hacker, I love exploiting these types of vulnerabilities, but also running a development team I hate seeing these types of vulnerabilities show up in our applications. That's where Sneak comes in. Sneak automatically scans your code, dependencies, containers, and configurations, finding and automatically fixing vulnerabilities in real time. So here's how easy this is. You can use my link, sneak.co forward slash cybermentor. Come to the landing page here and hit sign up. Once you're signed up, you can come in here and add a project. I'm gonna select a project from GitHub. And once your project's imported, Sneak finds your vulnerabilities and you can fix them with just a click. Watch this. I come into here, I can open a fix PR or a pull request. And Sneak opens fix PR so you can merge and move on. Plus it does it all from your existing tools, IDEs, CLI, repos, pipelines, Docker Hub, and more. And look how easy that was to just do a pull request with these issues in hand. It's amazingly fast. So what are you waiting for? Come check out Sneak and find out if there's any vulnerabilities within your projects. It's free and you can sign up using my link at sneak.co forward slash the cyber mentor. All right, let's build this password cracker. So what we're going to need to do before we start actually coding this is we're going to need to utilize some imports. So we're going to just come up here and say use standard environment. We're going to say use standard FS for file. That way we can import and read a file. We're going to say use STD again for IO and we're going to do buff read and buff reader. So if we do buff read comma buff reader, we'll talk about what all these are in just a minute. We're going to use SHA-2 because we are going to do some SHA-2 conversions. So we'll come up here and just do a SHA-256. And we're going to also need digest here. And lastly, we're going to do process of exit. All right, so, and I missed one colon here. All right, so we'll save that. If you save this and you run into an issue here where it says, hey, your SHA-2 is uncalled, well, we may have to come into our TOML file and add in a dependency here. At the time of this video, we have SHA-2 being on 0.10.6, so make sure you add your dependency in there so that way your program can run. You can ignore all of the yellow that's in here right now. It's just because we have uncalled items that we have, but we'll utilize everything here in just a minute. Okay, let's write this program now. So we're going to jump down into our main function and the first thing we're going to do is we want to determine how many arguments we need. So we're going to run this. We're going to say something like cargo run and then give our SHA-256 hash. Okay, so we need two arguments here because cargo doesn't count. Run will count as argument zero and then argument one will be our hash that we provide. So technically we have two arguments. One is zero, one is one, and we want to grab hash one. So here's what that's going to look like. We're going to come in here and say let args and we're going to make this a vector. So we'll just say vector and make it a string and we'll come say environment args and then we'll collect. All right. So all we're doing is we're collecting our arguments and we're storing that into this argument variable here. So we're going to say if args dot length is equal or actually let's say does not equal to two. We can come in here and then print out some stuff. We can come and say invalid amount of arguments. And then we can also give another line and just say something like example cargo run. And then we'll just say SHA-256 hash. OK, so that gives an example to the user if they're trying to run this and they're getting an error. And then we'll just exit with a code of one. One is default for an error here. 
Uh, you can use whatever error code you want. Zero is successful, but any code will work. I just use one because that is default. So what we're going to do now that we have this out of the way is we can actually store some variables or store our input into variables. So let's say let wanted hash equal to, and then we'll just borrow from args and we'll say position of one. So again, remember cargo run, if we said cargo run arg right here, this would be argument zero, this would be argument one. So we're going to make sure we're grabbing that hash that was right here. All right. And then we can come in here and we can set a password file and everything. I just want to test this logic really quick. So let's save this and then let's go to a terminal and open a new terminal. And I'm just going to run this really quick. So we can say cargo run test and then nothing should happen, right? Okay, nothing happened. We've got some errors in here, some warnings, doesn't matter. But if we said cargo run and didn't put anything in here, it would say, hey, invalid amount of arguments. Example here, process didn't exit successfully. We got error code exit one. So this part is working here, okay? So let's continue on. I'm gonna close out of this for now. And let's just say we wanted to say let password file be equal to, and then we're just gonna call out here locally. Uh, we'll just say source password list.txt and we'll make a file called password.txt, just a second. And then we're going to let a mutable number of attempts be equal to one. So what we're going to say here is, hey, attempts is one. We're going to iterate through attempts as we check this hash in our file that we're providing. So we could save that. All right. And we can continue on. And what's going to happen here is we can just go ahead and print a line and say something like attempting to crack. And then we'll come in here and just say something like this and do a new line. OK, and then we'll just pull down wanted hash. So whatever's stored, we'll print a little error message out or a little message that says, hey, we're attempting to crack whatever argument one is for the hash. All right. And with that, we can store some other variables. We can come say let password list be equal to and then we're going to open a file. So we're going to provide a password list and we're just going to hard code this for now. Um, you could build this without being hard coded, but that's OK as well. Uh, so we're going to do a unwrap, not a wrap. Sorry, we're going to unwrap this and our unwrap. If you ever use Visual Studio, in case you ever want to know, you can hover over what these things are. Basically, this is going to help us with errors. If there's an error, it's going to panic and it's going to shut down the program. So if we don't have a password file that opens, unwrap will handle some errors for us. It's very nice. So you come in here and say let reader equal to buff reader. All right. And we'll go ahead and say new password list. So what is buff reader? Same thing. You can hover over this. Basically, we're going to be going through and reading the same file over and over. And what does buff reader do? Well, it says right here, it can improve the speed of programs that make small and repeated read calls to the same file or network socket. So that's exactly what we're doing here. And that's why we're using buff reader. So Let's go ahead and come in here. And now we're going to loop through our iteration of our file. So we could say for line in reader dot lines. And now we can come and say, OK, first of all, I want to let line equal line dot unwrap. Same thing. We're just causing a panic if we don't have any line to read. And then we can come through here and say let password be equal to line dot trim. All right. And then to owned not owner, sorry, to owned and into bytes. OK, so what does this do? We're trimming the line. We're going to trim off any spaces, any white space that may be involved in our password. Uh, we're going to look at owning the data. OK, we want to own data from borrowed data. Again, this comes down to Rust and memory management. So if you're not familiar, that's OK. Uh, and then we're going to create a string or convert a string into bytes. And that's what we want to do here. So we're going to do that conversion here with this password. And then we're going to come in and let our password hash be equal to a format. And we're going to convert this over here. So first thing we're going to do is say something like this. I'm going to put our brackets in here and do this. All right. And then we'll come in and we're going to just say SHA-256. And we'll say digest this and do ampersand password. All right, so we are taking our password hash and we are converting the format into SHA-256. So we're grabbing the password, 
here, converting that into SHA-256 to see if it matches the SHA-256 hash that we're providing. So we're just going through a list of words or passwords that might be password one, one, two, three, four, whatever. And this will take those and convert those over to SHA-256 for us. And then we're going to do a comparison to see if that matches. So now we can come in here and do a print line. And we could say something like this. And this gets a little bit convoluted, but you can come and say something like this. Do a space, do another space, does equal, something like that. All right. And then we can come in here and call out attempts for the first brackets. And then for the second brackets, we're going to say standard string from UTF-8. All right. And then we're going to do password in here. So we're just converting that to UTF-8. And then we're going to go ahead and also unwrap that. Again, doing air control here. And then lastly, we're going to say password hash. Okay, so what this is going to print out is, hey, we're on attempt number one. Here is the password we're trying, equaling it to the password hash. And that's just going to print out on screen and it's going to repeat as we iterate through this for loop. All right, so if the password, actually we need an ampersand here, apologies, if our password hash is equal to our wanted hash, then guess what? We can print out something like password hash found after so many attempts, right? And then we could say this hash is equal to this, something like that, that's fine. And what you can actually do is just copy this. Why not? Because it's all the same. Same order, attempts, filling into here, and then our password and our password hash. So easy copy paste, in my opinion. And then we have successfully completed our mission. So we're going to exit with a code of zero because we're awesome. Now, what happens if we do not complete our mission? We need to come back in here and do our attempts and iterate that plus equals one, all right? So we will then loop through and do another iteration, upping the attempt counter as we go. One other thing, what happens if we find nothing? Well, we found nothing. Let's say password, hash, not found, womp womp, very sad. All right, you come in here and do that. So we'll save this, hopefully no errors. Looks like there's no errors. Let's run through this code really quick one more time before we actually show it off. Okay, we have arguments here. We're saying our arguments is going to be set to a vector and we're going to collect arguments. So we collect those arguments. If it does not equal two arguments, then we print out an error that says invalid amount of arguments. Here's an example of how to run this. Go through it and then we're going to, hey, okay, say argument one is going to be our hash. We're going to come in and have a password list and we're going to set a variable for attempts that is mutable. Go through, we're going to attempt to crack our hash. Just print that out. We're going to open up our password list. We're going to read that password list, and then we're going to iterate through it. We're going to look for our lines and our password, and we're going to say, okay, when we convert this password to a SHA-256, does it equal the hash that we provided? If it does, then we found it. Yay, congratulations. If it doesn't, we'll continue to loop through until we do find it, or we get through the whole password list and we don't find it, it'll say password hash not found. Let's go ahead and take a look at this in action. Okay, so to do this, we're going to do a couple of things. We're going to go out to Google. I just Googled 100 worst passwords. You can use whatever password list you want. And then I just clicked on this first GitHub link here, which brought me right here. Uh, all we have to do is click on this dictionary.txt and grab this password list. So you can go to raw, just hit control A, control C, and then you'll go back to your code. And what you can do here is just create a new file if you want. And you can just call this password list.txt or whatever you called it right here. All right. Since this is in your source, go ahead and paste that password list. Looks great to me. All right. Next thing you're going to want to do, and let's save this just to be safe. Okay. Next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to grab a random password out of here just to prove concept. I grabbed the term I love you. So if we go back over here, you can see that I went to Google, SHA-256 converter. I grabbed the word I love you out of the password list, and then we got a hash for it. So the hash that, or converter that I use is this GitHub page right here, first one. Any of these will do, no big deal. OK, 
Okay, you come in here and you just copy this hash. So with that, we can go back to our code and we can come in here and we can do a terminal, new terminal. We can just say something like cargo run and paste that and we should find this password. All right, so it got through 10 attempts. I picked a password at the very front of the list. It found that the password hash was I love you because it hashes to this, which is correct. So you can actually see the speed of Rust, by the way. If you want to go to your password list and just grab like the one at the very end, 105 attempts, you can see how fast this actually is. So I'm going to convert that and I'm going to just copy that again. And what I'm going to do is say cargo run, do it again, and you're going to see the speed of Rust. <laughs> Look at that. It took literally a tenth of a second to find the password hash in 105 attempts. Very, very awesome. Easy breezy. So that's it for the video. Hopefully you enjoyed this. I love coding projects like this. This is very beginner friendly and can introduce you to Rust, can introduce you to some of the logic and concepts behind it. So I, I do enjoy that aspect of teaching this and hopefully you found it valuable. So if you did, please do consider liking the channel, comment down below, tell me what other coding projects you want to see. And please do consider subscribing to the channel. We're well on our way to a million, slowly grinding there. And I appreciate each and every one of you. So until next time, my name is Heath Adams, aka The Cyber Mentor, and I do thank you for joining me. Peace out.